In our previous presentation, we understood the formal definition of bigo notation. We understood what is bigo notation and what it does. From now onwards, we will solve some problems on big O notation. This is set one of solved problems on big O notation. So let's get started and let's see what are the topics. First, we will get the quick recap of the formal definition of big O notation. And then we will proceed and solve some problems on big O notation. Let's start with big O notation recap. This is the formal definition of big O notation. Assuming fn and gn are non-negative functions. fn is equal to big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught. And c and n naught are constants. So, we want to check whether fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught. This means after n naught, we want to check whether fn is less than or equal to c dot gn or not. If it is the case that fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n, greater than or equal to n naught, then fn is considered equal to big O of gn. Or in other words, gn is asymptotically bigger than fn. Or we can say gn is the tight upper bound of fn. I promised that we will also understand the meaning of tight upper bound. For this, we will solve some problems and we will understand the meaning of tight upper bound alongside. Now we got the quick recap of formal definition of big O notation. Let's move ahead and let's solve some problems on big O notation. Here comes the first problem. Assume that fn is equal to 5n plus 50 and gn is equal to n. Is fn equal to big O of gn? Can we say this gn is asymptotically bigger than fn? From this, we can observe that fn is currently bigger than gn. fn is 5n plus 50 and this is just n. Is there any chance that after n naught, c dot gn becomes greater than fn? Let's try to find out. Before I give you the solution, I want you to solve this problem on your own. So pause the video and try to solve this problem. I hope you're done. Now let's dive into the solution. According to the definition of big O notation, fn is equal to big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. That's what we already know. Now let's take some value of c and let's multiply it by gn. Currently we know that gn is not greater than fn. Let's try to make gn bigger than fn by multiplying it by some value of c. Let us assume that c is equal to 6. There is a reason behind this assumption. I can take 4, 5, 2, 3 or any other constant. But I am assuming c is equal to 6. And the reason is pretty simple. Observe this expression, 5n plus 50. What is the leading term in this expression? This means, which term is bigger? 5n is bigger than 50. Why am I saying this? It is not always the case that 5n is bigger than 50. If we plug in the value of n as 1, we'll get 5 here and here we have 50. But for large values of n, 5n is greater than 50. Hence, 5n is the leading term. And obviously, it is bigger after some point. So, 5n is the leading term. With large values of n, this constant does not matter. 
So let's eliminate this constant for a while and let's focus on 5n. Let's say fn is equal to 5n and gn is equal to n. In order to prove that gn is an upper bound of fn or gn is asymptotically bigger than fn, we can take some constant which is greater than 5 so that if we multiply it by n, there can be a chance that gn becomes greater than fn. So, let's take c equal to 6 and let's multiply it by n. We will get 6n. There is a chance that at some point, 6n becomes greater than this expression. Let's see whether this is true or not. Let's now draw the table for 5n plus 50 and 6n. And now, one by one, we will plug in the values of n in these two expressions. Let's first plug in n equal to 10 in these two expressions. 5n plus 50 is fn and 6n is c dot gn. Here we have 5n plus 50 and here we have 6n. If n is equal to 10, then we will get 50 here and 50 plus 50 is 100. So, 5n plus 50 is equal to 100 for n equal to 10. What about 6n? If we plug in the value of n equal to 10 in 6n, we will get 60. So, here we are getting 60 and here we are getting 100. 100 is greater than 60. At this point, we can say fn is bigger than gn. But wait, we cannot come to this conclusion that gn is less than fn at this point. Because we took just one value of n and the value that we have chosen is a very small value. It is 10. Let's take n equal to 20 this time. For n equal to 20, we will get 100 here and 100 plus 50 is 150. So we'll get 150. What if we multiply 6 by 20? We will get 120. Again, 5n plus 50 is greater than 6n. Now let's take n equal to 50, much larger than 20. For n equal to 50, we will get 300 here and we will get 300 here as well because 50 into 6 is 300. At this point, we can observe that fn is equal to c dot gn. Now, let's take n equal to 51. We are taking one larger value than 50. This time, we will get 305 here and 306 here. So, clearly, n naught is equal to 50 because at this point and after this point, fn is less than or equal to c dot gn. This is what we can observe fn is equal to c dot gn at n equal to 50 and at n equal to 51, fn is less than c dot gn. And it is guaranteed that whatever the values we take greater than 50, fn is always less than c dot gn. And this means that fn is equal to big O of gn. Or in other words, 5n plus 50 is equal to big O of n for c equal to 6 and n greater than or equal to 50. Our n naught is 50 and c is 6. Then only we are saying that fn plus 50 is equal to big O of n. By the way, you can take any other constant and try to prove whether fn is less than or equal to c dot gn or not. So clearly 5n plus 50 is equal to big O of n. We can say this that n is asymptotically bigger than 5n plus 50. Note that I am not saying that n is bigger than 5n plus 50. It is not true. But n is asymptotically bigger than 5n plus 50. This means for n greater than or equal to 50 and c equal to 6, c dot gn is always greater than or equal to fn. This means 
6n is always greater than or equal to 5n plus 50 for n greater than or equal to 50. This is the meaning of this statement. I hope this is clear. 5n plus 50 is equal to big O of n. And by the way, n is the tight upper bound of 5n plus 50. Why am I saying this is tight upper bound or least upper bound? There can be many upper bounds of a specific function. In place of n, we can take n square, we can take n cube, we can take 2 to the power of n. These all functions are bigger than 5n plus 50. Hence, they all are upper bounds of 5n plus 50. And we just observed that n is also an upper bound of 5n plus 50. This is the least upper bound. This means it is closest to 5n plus 50. Pico notation tells the least upper bound. And we are interested in least upper bound. We want to know the closest upper bound of a function. n square, n cube, 2 to the power n and so on are all upper bounds of 5n plus 50, but n is the least upper bound. This means for n greater than or equal to 50 and c equal to 6, 5n plus 50 cannot grow more than n. Precisely c dot n, that is 6n. So with this, we solved the problem number 1. Now let's move to problem number 2. Assume that fn is equal to 5n plus 50 and gn is equal to log n base 10. Is gn upper bound of fn? Can we say that gn is asymptotically bigger than fn? I want you to pause this video for a while and try to find the solution to this problem. I hope you tried solving this problem and I hope you got the answer as well. Now, let's see my solution. According to the definition of big O notation, fn is equal to big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. Let us assume some large value of c. Let's take c equal to 1000. Now, let's draw the table. Here we have fn which is equal to 5n plus 50 and here we have c dot gn. gn is log n base 10 and we are multiplying it by c and we know c is 1000 so we will get 1000 log n base 10. Now let's take some values of n and let's try to prove this that gn is an upper bound of fn. Let's take n equal to 10. Here we will get 100 and here we will get 1000 because log 10 base 10 is 1 and 1 into 1000 is 1000. Clearly c dot gn is greater than fn but we cannot come to this conclusion because we want to know whether gn is bigger than fn for large values of n. This is the meaning of gn asymptotically bigger than fn. Let's take n equal to 10 to the power of 2. Here we will get 550 and here we will get 2000. 2000 is greater than 550. This means c dot gn is still greater than fn. Now let's take n equal to 10 to the power of 3. This means n is 1000. For this value of n, 5n plus 50 is equal to 5050. And 1000 log n base 10 is 3000. At this point, we can observe that c dot gn is less than fn. What about n equal to 10 to the power of 4? Here we will get 50,050. But 1000 log n base 10 is equal to 4000, which is much less than 50,050. Clearly, we can observe that for large values of n, fn is not less than or equal to c dot gn. This means fn is not equal to big O of gn. 
and hence we can say gn is not an upper bound of fn so we now know that gn does not grow faster than fn for large values of n so with this we are done with two problems on big o notation and this means we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one